welcome to your Help Reclaim. This is your host, Dr. PND. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about a very popular topic, uh, which uh, one that is very also very easily misunderstood and malpracticed, uh, and it's called um, the proper way to detoxification. So today's topic is going to be detoxification, how to support this um, natural, uh, very vital uh, process of our bodies. So in a nutshell, uh, detoxification basically is an ongoing process that is performed by multiple organs um, in our bodies. Uh, and it's not a sporadic uh, event that is triggered by basically special, you know, diets and supplements and protocols and, you know, lifestyle uh, methods. Uh, it, it's not. So that's something that I really want to make clear. This is a, it's, it's a problem that a lot of people confuse. A lot of people misunderstand. Um, they, you know, uh, people believe that they have to actually trigger that process themselves uh, they're responsible for it uh, and it's not something that you know just happens naturally um, and that's why a lot of those extreme detox protocols um, can really be counterproductive uh, some can be right down potentially harmful uh, for people's health uh, can do a lot of damage to their metabolism um, immediate acute problems can be caused by severe uh, detoxification and purgatory based um, you know plants uh, so <clears throat> what i'm really going to try to drill home is that our bodies do not need restricted diets uh, and plans and protocols and uh, you know starvation to detoxify. If anything, they require optimal sufficient energy and nutrients. The previous podcast, we focused on micronutrient deficiencies, and we're going to indirectly piggyback on that information, how important whole food, nutrient-dense, uh, clean diet is uh, for you know, clean foods uh, are for um, our health, and in this case, including detoxification. So everybody knows that um, you know our livers <clears throat> are the primary detoxification organ. That's true. Uh, they do require adequate protein, energy, nutrients uh, to truly function optimally. They're an organ; it's an extremely metabolically active uh, organ. Uh, so chronic undereating, for instance, will impair liver function a long term and short term. Uh, and by default will impair overall detoxification processes. Supporting our detoxification involves honestly a holistic approach, and that is eating enough, uh, regular movement, high quality sleep, ensuring daily bowel movements are you know optimized, and of course managing stress and just rather relying on quick fix solutions, um, you know, of lifestyle drastic changes and different detox and cleansing and purgatory uh, products. You know, so a lot of things that, you know, our lymph system also plays a crucial role in detoxification by transporting waste and maintaining fluid balance, uh, supporting lymph flow, especially to proper exercise is a must. Obviously, you know, massage and uh, maintaining gut health, uh, those two things are very important as well. They can, you know, also contribute uh, to that. But, you know, lymphatic system is, there's not a pump, the lymph does not have a, a, a pump like the circulatory system does. So, it is very dependent on our movement. That's why daily walking and constant moving and healthy proper exercise is so vital for the detoxification process. But let's go ahead and go on and unpack um, this topic today. That I really want to, you know, try to explain and really hopefully drill uh, the message uh, for you guys home of what proper detoxification is and you know, what isn't. So, you know, all of you guys have seen in, you know, recent years, and I've been in this industry for a very long time, you know, I've known about and seen these protocols at least for over 25 years. And, you know, colleagues that are, you know, my colleagues that are a lot older than I am, you know, they have seen this even before then. Uh, but, you know, in recent years, the last 10, 15 years especially, the concept of detoxing and cleansing has really gained immense popularity with literally limitless protocols, diets, supplements, promising everything to purge your body, cleanse it, detoxify it of harmful toxins, you know, so you can be able to see better, clean, you know, think clearer, ultimately change your life forever. It doesn't work like that. You know, the reality of detoxification, unfortunately, is far more complex in new sense than just many of those, you know, quick fixes and, you know, short-term um, intense uh, programs, protocols. 
that people get involved that, um, you know, really will have you believe. It doesn't work like that. So, you know, my goal is to be able to, you know, explore really the truth about detoxification and how, you know, our bodies really naturally uh, detoxify uh, and, you know, use this, you know, vital function. Um, so the best way to support your body's in a, you know, in a detoxification processes are pretty simple. <clears throat> and you'll see, you know, exactly why here in a little bit. So uh, let's kind of try to understand a basic detoxification process. Uh, so it's a crucial bodily function process that obviously involves removing, uh, you know, toxic substances from our bodies. It's a vital function, you know, we cannot live without it. And there's the accumulation of toxins, especially nowadays from our society, you know, that we live in uh, with, you know, artificial chemicals and which are everyone, our food, our water, our homes, our, you know, air, uh, care products, uh, I mean, personal care products and you name it, you know, they're all there. So it's an ongoing process, um, you know, that has to be taken care of. You know, we have pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, plastics, heavy metals, different air pollutants, and all of these, um, can and will lead to ultimately mitochondrial dysfunction, which will lead to some kind of chronic disease eventually. So contrary to popular belief, um, detoxification is really not a sporadic event that needs to be triggered again and started and maintained by, you know, protocols and programs, things like, you know, different cleanses with herbs and fasting and so forth. Uh, instead, it's really an ongoing process that our bodies perform continuously to maintain health and survival. And we don't even know they're doing it, but they're doing it literally every single second uh, of, you know, as we live. This complex system will involve multiple organs working in harmony, obviously. So including, you know, a liver and kidneys and digestive tract, our skin, our lungs, uh, you know, lymphatic system. They all work in concert with each other, you know, to bring about this, uh, you know, ultimate uh, natural healthy process of detoxification. So a lot of the, you know, the, the marketing that, you know, surrounds all those, you know, uh, cleanse and detox fads uh, often preys on people's vulnerability, vulnerability, honestly, especially when they're desperate for health changes quickly. Okay. Uh, that's why I see, you know, intermittent fasting, that was like the latest and the greatest fad uh, for a few years. Now, luckily his blown is proverbial nut now and it's kind of, you know, gone away. Um, I've seen, you know, the water fasts, the juice fasts, uh, you know, the prolonged water fasts, uh, like things like extreme stupidity, like people fasting for like two, three months straight, but nothing literally but water um, and doing great damage to their metabolisms and systems in general. Uh, you know, so many approaches to detoxification with a quick fix mindset, you know, hoping that detox or cleanse will, will provide a rapid, you know, relief and, you know, results. But unfortunately, you know, these approaches often will backfire, leading people to just, you know, uh, up and down temporary relief of a symptom um, or something that they might think they would have addressed, perhaps they really didn't. Um, and it's literally almost like a yo-yo dieting restriction binge cycles. And I see this all the time. They might feel better. They might feel great during the fast. Uh, for example, <clears throat> whether an intermittent fast or a whole day or a few day or a week fast, they really know, literally might feel very, very well. And the minute the fast is over, they just go to town. They just can't stop eating. They go right back to their, you know, old way of life and eating you know, garbage. Uh, oftentimes, um, if they are toxic and they really depending on what kind of toxins they're, they're holding in their body and other, obviously, issues they have. But a lot of times they can go into a very nasty um, detox response that they get really sick, uh, you know, vomit and, you know, sweating and having, you know, loose stools, and feel feeling miserable, you know, migraine, headaches, you name it. And that too is actually potentially very dangerous and most certainly can harm the bodies because you're doing a massive influx of toxin release that the body truly cannot detoxify properly uh, because it cannot remove it fast enough. So yeah, you might be, you know, putting your uh, liver in overtime and cannot compensate uh, and 
those toxins don't really get you know the proper metabolism that they need to be cleared out of the body um so you know people have gotten hurt with those you know kind of severe uh, detoxes and cleanses um some people you know they, they might lose weight uh, very rapidly most of it is water during a detox uh, but it's almost always they'll regain it back once the detox stops so you know, there's there's a lot of pitfalls of those extreme uh, detox plans and so forth. Um, at the very least, you know, something like intermittent fasting or doing a juice or water fast for a day or half a day or a couple of days, they'll not get anything out of it. There's really no long-term lasting benefit, even if they don't get a purgatory response and in some kind of uh, negative reaction, they... Um, Ultimately, there's very little to no benefit. There's definitely no long-term benefit to those uh, extreme, uh, you know, detox plans and cleanses that they do. So um, many popular detox plans now uh, do require drastic lifestyle changes that honestly can, again, can be really detrimental to people's uh, health. Uh, these plans are often, you know, highly res restrictive, very highly restrictive, some of them, especially if they do like a, you know, multi-day water fast. Um, they significantly reduce if not completely eliminate caloric intake. Uh, like I said, you know, chronic under-eating will have a negative consequence, you know, on people's health, um, including the liver, which is really the primary and most important detoxification organ in the body. Uh, so, um, just, there's a lot of, a lot of negative pitfalls to those plans. Uh, also, those extreme diets um, and protocols can be counterproductive to the goal of uh, just overall improved detoxification. One of those lower metabolic rate often is a result of severe caloric restriction for one period of time. Uh, many reduce the body's ability to efficiently perform the detoxification processes themselves due to just decreased energy availability. A lot of people don't understand uh, the fact that Proper detoxification needs optimal mitochondrial energy production and utilization, and they'll sequester that with those you know, severe protocols. Uh, also, it's crucial to understand that you know our bodies do need a special restrictive you know I'm sorry do not need a special restrictive diets uh, to detoxify themselves. The best way to keep detoxification functioning properly is honestly to produce sufficient metabolic energy, meaning that you give your organs enough fuel to do their job effectively. And at the same time, do not interfere with the processes. So it's really a simple concept. Um, and I'm going to go over that. I'm going to go over that in a little bit more detail to see, hopefully, make you guys understand. Um, let me kind of focus on the key detoxification organs. Okay, that people, I'm not going to go into detail or anything like that. But I just want to mention them so you guys understand. Well, the first one is the, the liver, obviously. That's people call the detoxification, you know, main organ, the powerhouse of detoxification. Um, it is, you know, people can argue with that. I, again, get, get to the bottom line. We, we don't really care about intricacies and, you know, squabbles of severe details, but some consider it to be the, you know, primary pinnacle detoxification organ. Some people consider it uh, to be obviously a very important or big part of it. It doesn't matter who cares. Just the bottom line is this is, is a, is a very, very important detoxification organ, and it's for good reason. Uh, it performs over 500 tasks that we know of, literally. Uh, with, the, with actual detoxification just being one of its many crucial functions. You cannot live without a liver, everybody knows that. No. So it, it does a lot of stuff, okay, a lot. Again, I'm not gonna go into that, but the liver process toxins ultimately, in case of detoxification, it processes organs by breaking them down into less harmful substances. They can be excreted, excreted, excuse me, to our urine and bile. This process occurs through two phases, what they're known as phase one and phase two detoxification pathways. Now, uh, when both of those pathways require energy to convert those toxins into water soluble forms, they can be ultimately eliminated out of the body, you know, through uh, the GI. So, to perform all these tasks, our livers do require healthy, high-quality proteins, energy, and micronutrients. So first, is, let's look at protein. The detoxification process will rely very heavily on certain enzymes. Well, these enzymes are made out of amino acids, which come from protein. Okay, So 
eating high quality animal protein is very important since these are complete protein sources that you know provide all the essential amino acids that your body and ultimately your liver will ever need. Um, <clears throat> some people argue, well, you can do that with plant proteins. Uh, well, you know, that's not my experience and that's not my opinion. Uh, plant proteins uh, often don't provide a complete amino acid profile necessary for optimal liver function. I mean, you look at a full-blown vegan and a most vegetarians, I mean, they look like the walking dead, no offense, but, you know, <laughs> they don't look the ultimate picture of health uh, and vibrancy. So, but that's 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 another story. So, anyway, toxins must be conjugated, okay, with amino acids uh, to be carried out of the body. Uh, without adequate complete protein sources, detoxification uh, can be hindered. And ultimately, it will eventually. So, so the other thing that is required for the liver to properly uh, do its function is energy and micronutrients. Yeah, so the liver is made up of cells, like every organ is, and every cell requires energy uh, and nutrients to function properly. Just as simple as that. The second phase, especially of the liver detoxification, is very heavily nutrient dependent. It requires energy, amino acids, vitamins, minerals of different kinds. And the more toxic you are, the more and the higher those requirements are. Now, for instance, everybody knows that alcoholics are uh, tiamine uh, deficient. They're just a staple. I mean, you're not going to ever find a full-blown alcoholic who is not going to have a, some kind of form of you know, tiamine or B1 deficiency. Not to mention magnesium and B complexes in general, among other things. But you know, even conventional medicine will recognize the need for you know tiamine. Uh, so the liver, especially, um, needs glucose and energy to perform proper detoxification. So low levels of stored glucose, or the, form, the stored form of glucose glycogen, uh, this will encounter a sluggish liver by default. It just can't, doesn't have the energy to do its job. When the liver doesn't detoxify well, well, hormones such as estrogen can build up and accumulate, leading to estrogen dominance and other issues. So the liver requires glucose also to convert, um, you know, inactive hormones of T4 to the active form of T3, for instance, uh, which all cells require uh, the active form of you know, T3 to produce energy. Uh, without adequate T3, you will have decreased cellular function and resulting in a slower metabolism, which you see with people that are hypothyroidist. Um, so eating enough food, healthy food, whole nutrient-dense foods, you know, for your body's needs is crucial for proper liver health and in this case, detoxification process. So when people are, you know, consistently and chronically underfed, and not consuming enough energy from their diets, uh, you know, like with those extreme fasts and stuff like that, the liver can really, um, you know, lose optimal function and actually chronically done with, you know, caloric restrictions, severe chronic caloric restrictions, you actually see a shrinkage in liver size uh, and by default, the function as well, it will decrease drastically. So, you know, um, there's a lot of, I mean, people have proved that, science has proved that, there was a, to my knowledge, there was a, at least, couple of studies, but one a good one is the Minnesota starvation experiment. Uh, just look it up. Just Google Minnesota starvation experiment. You'll see what I'm talking about and what happens when you chronically under eat. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, you know, that's for the liver, uh, kind of give you an idea why we need energy and nutrients, micronutrients and protein. The second organ, obviously everybody knows is uh, the you know, renal function, uh, kidneys. Uh, you know, they obviously filter out waste. They play a crucial role in detoxification by filtering out the blood to remove waste products and excess substances, including toxins and metabolic byproducts. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, and anybody, ask anybody who's in full-blown dialysis and they'll tell you exactly what they, why they have to do dialysis uh, and what those dialysis machines actually do. So, you know, the, the kidneys will produce urine to excrete the waste from the body. Like the liver, you know, they also require energy to function properly and optimally. Um, however, you know, one dietary factor to consider for optimal kidney health is, uh, honestly, in our industries, is called cost calcium to phosphorus ratio. Okay, and the balance calcium to phosphorus ratio uh, can negatively impact kidney health by increasing the rates of calcification. You always want a good ratio is one to two and a half. Um, want to do, it all depends, you know, kind of who you listen to, but you can easily look at your calcium to phosphorus ratio with just a regular CBC and CMP blood panel. Um, you might have to request phosphorus to some of them, but all you got to do is look at your calcium and look at, you know, phosphorus and divide those two and you'll see, you look at your ratio and see how honestly alkaline or acidic you are. 
very simple way to find out. Um, anyway, you know, our modern food supply and the processed food that we people eat ultimately and overconsume uh, by default is very high phosphorus, so that by default will consume overconsume phosphorus. Uh, so some of the most you know processed foods contain extremely high phosphorus contents and, and additives as well, which a lot of it comes from actually those additives. Um, so you know that's something again a big reason why we need to stop eating processed foods. Uh, please understand now there's the whole sensitivity debate of well processed food can be technically anything that somebody made. That's not the case. We're not talking about that. We're talking about you know foods have been processed by chemical processes. Uh, so a lot of people, um, the you know people that are really staunches for accuracy, they call it ultra processed foods. It's just any processed food. Okay, just get over the little against stupid intricacies that people get caught into. And when I say processed food, it's the same as ultra ultra processed food. There's really no difference. Okay. Um, you know, Oreo cookies, the Oreo cookie, you know, laid potato chips is laid, laid potato chips is processed food, ultra processed food, whatever makes no difference. So just now processed foods, again, another reason why they have to be taken out. Um, just, uh, you know, easy way to support the kidney health. And it's really very crucial to assure that, you know, we have adequate and balanced calcium with phosphorus intake. Uh, that's why actually people that are not sensitive or allergic to dairy, if they have access to high quality dairy products, um, is you know very well good way to do that. Uh, well cooked leafy greens like collard greens. Okay, this is a really good way to really eat a you know balance the phosphorus to calcium ratio, uh, and that will help you bent, you know maintain a balanced calcium to phosphorus ratio for you know optimal kidney function. Um, basically, you know, any healthy natural foods, that's why just in general, a lot of, you know, vegetables, leafy green or just green alkalizing vegetables are very healthy for uh, proper renal function. Uh, people get caught into the, you know, uh, certain nightshade families or the oxalates. I'm not going to go there. That's, that, that's a byproduct, again, of people eating processed foods and having a, you know, poor lifestyles and blaming something, uh, you know, they get, they get hyper-focused on something and they go with it. Okay. It's not the oxalates. It's not, you know, the nitrate family has problems. It, it's, it's your, it's your crappy diet. Okay. Let, let's get real and let's understand that. Okay. When you address that, I can promise you nothing will happen when you eat nitrate family. If obviously you're allergic to it or have severe sensitivity to it, that's a different story but most people do not, okay? Uh, so I know I get questions about, well, do oxalates really make a difference if you have a healthy, truly optimal, proper diet and a properly healthy functioning body? No, there will not be a problem, okay? Uh, but um, I digress, so let's go <laughs> stay on track here. Uh, the third organ uh, is, you know, the, the functioning of the lungs. You know, proper functioning of the lungs is like obviously essential. And you're breathing out toxins. Uh, they do detoxify. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, remaining uh, you know active, well hydrated, um, and also primarily breathing through your nose and not being a chronic mouth breather um, is an excellent strategy to really enhance lung function and support additionally support the whole overall body detoxification process. The skin that's uh, the largest organ in the body. Obviously, sweating. Nobody uh, is going to deny that. You know, healthy sweating is extremely, um, you know, healthy for you on many different levels. That's why saunas are very popular. Obviously, exercise, and you know, through the sweat, you also the body excretes uh, organs. I mean, uh, toxins very, very efficiently. Okay, um, detoxification is you know again, this is a big process to the skin and elimination. So. Uh, actually, particularly, is very effective for certain heavy metals and other fat soluble toxins that can be difficult for the body to eliminate through other means. Uh, so, you know, for instance, you know, if somebody gets um, ingest glyphosate or Roundup, the active ingredient of Roundup, you can see that in their sweat within literally minutes of that. And sweating is a very way to a very efficient way to actually clean, detoxify glyphosate out of your body. That's just the FYI. 
Uh, number five would be the digestive tract, right? That's like the, you know, extremely important when the liver does its function and dumps it, it dumps it into the digestive tract and the digestive tract has to be functioning properly to be able to eliminate uh, the toxins. So that's why the GI plays a very crucial role in the toxification process by eliminating waste products from food and other substances. Uh, it's also is a barrier, uh, which meaning, means that it prevents toxins from being absorbed into your bloodstream. Okay. Uh, the liver will filter toxins from the blood. And again, once processed, will deposit these toxins into the bile. The bile then travels to your bile duct and is eliminated through the bowel movements. So again, another reason why having healthy daily bowel movements and a healthy functioning GI is absolutely essential for optimal health. Okay. Uh, constipation is a horrible horrible sign on many different levels. So if you have a bad chronic constipation, you're building toxins in your GI and your whole body. And just, it's a, also a sign that overall detoxification process of your body is really not functioning well at all. So you have a chronic detox, you know, uh, chronic constipation, you can rest assured that your detoxification of your whole body is impaired to some degree or another. Uh, a lot of people think that, well, you know, having a bowel movement every, you know, two or three days uh, is ideal. It's not. Absolutely, it's not ideal. Not even close. You don't have to have a bowel movement, you know, two, three, four times a day. But having one good bowel movement a day, uh, it is extremely important. You know, you might have a day or two that you might skip it, depending on stress or something happens or did need. Not a problem. But ultimately, the, the following day, you should be able to make that up. And you're going to see the volume actually of the bowel increase. So you really have to be careful what you read and what you believe because there's a, there's a far cry from, you know, okay and acceptable and what is really truly optimal. Uh, so the other one we're going to talk about uh, track of detoxification is the lymphatic system. That's kind of like the sort of the ignored and misunderstood, uh, you know, system of the body. Uh, but the lymphatic system, it consists obviously of lymph vessels, lymph nodes and lymphatic organs that plays a crucial role in detoxification by transporting uh, and draining excess fluid and proteins and uh, other things that, that clears, uh, you know, the clearance of metabolic waste and toxins out of your body. Uh, so even though the liver is the primary responsibility for the detoxification through metabolic processes, the, liver, the lymphatic system actually supports detoxification indirectly by maintaining fluid balance, transporting immune cells and waste, and aiding in the absorption of fat and fat-soluble vitamins. So their integrated function of the liver and the lymphatic system helps maintain the body's internal environment and eliminates harmful substances that obviously uh, you know, could otherwise accumulate and cause damage in your body. Uh, lymphatic circulation also does involve intrinsic and intrinsic mechanisms uh, to ensure the movement of lymph uh, throughout the body. So they can act you know, primarily like pumps uh, when actively transporting lymph uh, against the pressure gradient. So uh, they also can act as a conduct vessel that when passively transporting lymph uh, down to a pressure gradient, what's called. So intrinsic mechanism uh, basically inside the lymph vessel, uh, things like you know, muscle squeezing. So lymphatic vessels have muscles in their walls that contract and relax, pushing the lymph forward, similar to how our intestines move, you know, our food. Uh, they also have valves. You know, one way uh, valves inside the lymphatic vessels ensures that once lymph moves into one direction, it can go backflow uh, in the other, in a, you know, return in the other direction, keeping everything on track. The endothelial cells, uh, they can shrink or expand, helping to push lymph along tissues uh, you know, then they swell or become inflamed. Uh, some of the, the extrinsic factors, people, you know, like being the outside the lymph vessels is, you know, the muscle pump, which when we move uh, our muscles during exercise or even just walking, uh, it's, you know, squeezes nearby lymphatic vessels and ultimately causing, you know, a, like a pumping action. It helps, you know, push the lymph fluid along. That's why exercise is extremely important for proper lymphatic function, walking. That is why another reason why walking is extremely a healthy uh, part of the exercise protocol and that can be done daily basis. Even though it's very low intensity, still has a lot of function. Trampoline bouncing, that's also can, um, has been known and it's a, it's a fact that it's very efficient way to <clears throat> really move the lymph uh, system and get it working and you know help with detoxification breathing. That's another one. When you breathe in and out, it affects pressure in our chest, which also helps to move uh, lymph, you know, the lymph towers, the heart, you know, 
And that too, um, again, is part of why exercise is so effective, especially engaging in you know higher intensity exercise that causes you know higher rate of uh, quality and quantity of breathing. External pressure, obviously, everybody knows things like massage. That's why dry brushing, lymph massages, any massage really uh, makes a big difference and can really move things along. That's why some, if you ever ask a massage therapist, they'll tell you sometimes when they do massage, people can get nauseated and or they'll get sick either a little after she gets, you know, or the person gets started or I mean, after the massage. And that's why I always tell you, drink a lot of water, drink a lot of water after a massage because they move toxins. And if somebody's very toxic and depending on what kind of toxins they have, not just how much, uh, with a massage can really, things can get moving in the limb system and cause an overflow and overload of toxins and the person get nauseated, they're sick. Uh, I have seen that happen. So again, the lymph the system is passive, but there's a lot of you know ways they can you know be you know moved around. So another good reason to drink a lot of water, exercise properly, and sweat. <laughs> The last organ that a lot of people, uh, and it's not by any means not the least important, but it, it, the last organ that people would even think about anything regarding detoxification is actually our brains. Um, and these are very overlooked about detoxification, but the brain does play a crucial role in this process. He, what it does is clear cellular waste and fluids through the glymphatic system, that is with a G, G L Y M P H A T I C, glymphatic system, which is drastically. Uh, upregulated during sleep. Well, guess what? That's why a big reason among many others, sleep is so important. So it's not just the quality, but also the quantity of sleep, which makes a difference. <laughs> Again, making, prioritizing good sleeping habits an absolute must. So yeah, sleep is not just about rest and recuperation. It's actually an active time for the brain to perform essential detoxification processes. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and go real quick into the holistic, natural approach of detoxification. Uh, given the complexities and the interconnectedness, uh, interconnected nature of the body's detox systems, it's obviously clear that you know there are no shortcuts or quick fixes. I hope you guys understand that. So when it comes to detoxing, okay, there's no shortcuts. Instead, the best way to support our bodies in this natural process is to really focus on overall health and well-being. And literally here are the keys, key factors to prioritize. Eat enough, eat healthy, high nutrient, dense, wholesome foods, okay? There are many organs that are listed that are involved in detoxification. All of them require proper nutrition and energy. It's just a fact of life, okay? Uh, include a variety of protein sources, but especially complete proteins from animal healthy uh, raised animal sources to provide the essential amino acids for detoxification um, and the enzymatic functions that are needed. Okay, don't shy away from carbohydrates. You know, healthy quality carbohydrates are extremely important because again, they'll break down to glucose and that is the essential energy source for detoxification processes, especially the liver. So healthy carbohydrates are going to be obviously your sweet potatoes, your yams, your potatoes, uh, you know, organic, uh, you know, steamed rice uh, can be white rice, actually, preferably. It's a lot easier to digest. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, gluten-free uh, grains uh, that are obviously organic, they're not sprayed like oatmeal. Just all those are great sources of reliable, stable energy, you know, for the liver and the other organs to uh, do their job by providing the proper energy. Number two, again, movement and sweat. Regular physical activity will support detoxification every single time. If you have the luxury of having a sauna, especially right after you finish uh, exercising, that just compounds the benefit of exercise, uh, sweating. So it's going to take care of the lymphatic system. It's going to take care of the uh, you know other detox you know, pathways that we you know we discussed. Number three, prioritize sleep. Sleep, I can do a two-day seminar of sleep it is extremely important. And we as a nation um, have a severe sleep problem, okay? Chronic insomnia and chronic undersleeping is a big, big problem. A lot of people think because they sleep, um, they're okay. Actually, they're not. They're obviously better than people that have insomnia, but a lot of people 
day, even though I've actually fall asleep and stay asleep, do not truly sleep properly and restful. And a big reason for that is, you know, the obesity epidemic, um, you know, the suboptimal metabolic health. I mean, sleep apnea uh, is huge. CPAP machines are becoming like the norm. I mean, people literally brag about it and joke about it. And it's like, almost like now if I get over a certain age and it's normal. I mean, I have, you know, athletes, literally. Um, fit people that are powerful, strong, fit on sleep apnea. Uh, with sleep apnea, on CPAP machines, thinking that's normal. It's not. Uh, you're causing severe damage. Obviously, it's a lot better not having the CPAP machine. Don't get me wrong, but still, the fact that you cannot sleep naturally yourself is a big problem. Um, people uh, also due to fear, chronic fear, chronic anxiety, depression, uh, you know, living in a fight or flight mode all the time. That'll destroy sleep like nothing else will. Um, and a lot of folks live with sub subliminal chronic fear and anxiety, you know, in society, which will affect sleep every time. So try to address that, okay? Uh, number four, ensure regular bowel movement. That's kind of a loaded statement, but it does have a lot to do with sleep. When you sleep good, you're going to go to the bathroom good. Uh, constipation is actually, from a holistic standpoint, is, is a big problem. It's caused a lot of it due to stress and primarily low-grade fear. Okay. I'm not going to go into that, but you can read about it. There's a naturopathic doctor. His name is um, Dr. David Sandstrom. He wrote a book. He talks about how fear uh, really affects proper bowel movement. And a lot of people that are stressed, they're really fearful as well. So try to address bowel movements. There's a lot you can do to support it. Um, again, I've talked about support the lymphatic system. <clears throat> Activities that support lymph flow, and that is massage, dry brushing, trampoline, and of course, walking, exercising, sauna. All those things will make it happen. Um, but when you do know those things, the other half of the equation has to be addressed. And that is eliminate the toxins in the first place. Now, look, you can't live in a bubble. I get that. None, none of us can. It will. And even if I could, I wouldn't because you'll be separated from society, obviously. So with that being said, limit, limit. I didn't say eliminate completely, but limit to whatever possible scenario you can in your personal life. Limit your toxic exposure. You know, things like alcohol. I did a whole podcast on that. Obviously, drugs, over-the-counter prescription drugs, opioids, you name it, whatever it might be. That's obvious. <laughs> but a lot of the toxicity that people really have comes from the food that they eat, uh, from the personal hygiene products that they use. Um, and really, a lot of it's from their environment. So investigate those sources and eliminate what you can and severely limit what you can eliminate. But ultimately, reduce your toxic exposure. Last one. Again, manage stress, which is going to affect really all of those, including your bowel movements, as we talked about. Chronic stress can kill you faster than, honestly, a lot of other things can. And it will impair, without fail, numerous, you know, various bodily functions. Um, and not the very least, this is going to be your detoxification process. So chronic stress it really does number the body on many, many different levels. Everybody knows that if you ever ask an emergency room physician, they're going to give you, depending on the person, the experience, but a, a pretty good number, 60, 70, 80% of people that walk into the emergency room is because of some kind of chronic stress trigger. Whether it'll be a heart attack, whether that'll be a panic attack, feeling like they're suffocating, they can't breathe, you know, pain, stiffness, you know, locked jaw, TMJ, never. You know, it's a lot of it stress related, either directly or indirectly. So by focusing on these you know, fundamentals, you will create an environment in which your body's natural detoxification process will flourish and you will be really constantly, you know, engage optimal function of the detox processes. You don't have to go on, uh, you know, ridiculous protocols and diets and programs and you know, severely restrict the caloric aspects, uh, you know, let alone things like, you know, juice and water fasting for long periods of time. Um, people always ask me anything about intermittent fasting. I don't. Look, if you're going to fast for a religious reason, for something, you know, faith-based, 
um, if there's any other, you know, circumstances that whatever job you do, you just have to have to, have to you know, have to fast. For example, you can't really have breakfast in the morning for whatever reason, and you're used to eating within a eight, 10 hour window, not a problem, but it's just your life. But if you're doing this on purpose, it's sort of not sort of, it's not going to really serve you the best. I, I get a lot of people say, well, you know, I really feel good while I'm doing it. Yes, you do, because you're really, you know, not sure in the problems that you already have, especially you have digestive issues. So of course you're going to feel good because you're giving a rest. Um, but you know, that'll be the same as you, you know, you know, breaking your leg and resting it. And of course you're going to feel good when you're resting it, but you know, as soon as you start walking in your leg, you have a fracture or some kind of break, um, you know, you're going to start having pain. You're going to start, you know, having issues and you have to fix that. And same thing here, when you have issues with, um, you know, digestive uh, function and you don't eat, yeah, of course the body gives it a break and it feels good while not having food to deal with. But as soon as you start to ingest food, whatever is healthy, even if it's healthy food, you start having problems because you're not addressing the root cause of the problem. Um, in addition to that, people who want to lose weight, I, I cannot get uh, this message honestly across enough. And that is people really destroy their metabolic efficiency when they chronically do caloric restriction. I cannot tell you how badly they do. If you don't believe me, Look at the last 20 years with the HCG diet, with the, all those, you know, low calorie, forced starvation based diets. Look what happens. Look what people do even fasted. They did a juice fast or did a water fast or might have been, they got nowhere. If anything, the weight came back with a vengeance and then they even had a harder time doing it, even if they repeated the program again. Because when you lower your metabolic rate and metabolic function, you're going to have problems. And one of those problems is you're not going to be able to lose weight or body fat well. And when I say people say I want to lose weight, what they're saying is they don't want to lose extra fat out of post tissue. They don't want to lose muscle. Obviously, if you have excess water a little bit, sure, but that's really insignificant. You definitely don't want to lose water and get dehydrated. You know, again, muscle is precious. The last thing you want to lose is muscle mass. People want to lose this body fat. And when you're have a suboptimally function metabolism, you cannot lose weight properly and have problems. Okay. So what do you do? The easiest way, the most efficient, the healthiest way to fix that is to increase your metabolic rate, increase your, you know, optimize your mitochondrial function for energy production. And that is through proper, healthy, high nutrient dense eating plan, whatever that might look like. And a lot of people have a very hard time with that. And they think, well, I'm eating too much. And, nope, you got to get your metabolism up. And you'll be amazed at how the body starts to let go of body fat, build muscle. The energy goes up, you feel great. As opposed to constantly doing those yo-yo dieting, caloric restrictions, taking stupid supplements that are right down worthless, if not harmful. A lot of people take medications. Uh, not the latest crazy is the ridiculousness of the Ozempic. Uh, and all those, uh, you know, GLP inhibitors, uh, it just, it's, it's a sad scenario, uh, but you guys are going to see a massive fallout of that as well. I promise you that when, uh, you know, the proverbial nut plays its role, you're going to see the issues with uh, those drugs uh, we weight loss. So I've been around for a long time and I've seen a lot of things. There's been guys that have mentored me that I've seen that are someone have passed, some are still alive in old age, but they have seen a lot more than I have. And the pattern and the nonsense is all the same. Everybody keeps looking for the greatest and the latest. The end of the BL is going to solve all your problems and never delivers. There's never such thing and never will be such thing. So the sooner you get that to your head about weight loss, especially the better you're going to be and the more success you're going to have faster. So Anyway, again, I digress again. Apologize for that, but it's a topic and question that I constantly get asked about and it gets tiring after a while, honestly, but we just have to keep talking about it until people get it or don't. Um, in conclusion, basically, again, in the age of quick fixes and miracle cures and the end of BOs and magic potions and programs and supplements, drugs, you name it, it is always tempting to believe that, uh, you know, whatever the latest and the greatest is going to um, 
provide results. It's going to purge everything out of your body. You're going to be toxic free and you'll be good to go. It's going to change your life and you're going to have optimal health. It's not, it doesn't work like that. However, as we've explored and we discussed, the reality of detoxification is far more complex and ongoing than any quick fix whoever, uh, you know, be able to address or suggest. So the truth is our bodies are constantly engaged in detoxification process every second, okay? Whether we're asleep or awake. As long as you're you know, sucking wind and you actually are alive physically, you're detoxifying. So, you know, it, it's a process that's continuously going on. So with multitude of organs working in harmony to eliminate those toxins and maintain our health, uh, is our due diligence to really do the right thing and support those organs and the process through the stuff that I discussed. You know, again, the liver, the kidneys, the digestive, the GI tract, the lungs, the lymphatic system, and again, a brain, an organ that was really never talked about in detox, all play synergistically a crucial role in this intricate system of and process of this, you know, detoxifications. Um, and again, remember. It is not a detoxification, cleansing, whatever you want to call it. It's not a sporadic single event that is triggered, but it's a continuous process. Understand that. Uh, and our bodies are remarkably capable of maintaining balance and eliminating toxins by themselves when given the right support. And that support ultimately is living right. That is addressing your lifestyle, addressing your stress, addressing your nutrition, and living a healthy lifestyle, which most Americans in this country do not. And that is the essential and ultimately of holistic health, basically to get educated to how to live right, okay? Because even if you do the right things the right way and live temporarily the right way and you address the issues, eventually they're going to come back in one form or another, if not the same, because you reverted back to your old bad habits of living. So remember... Um, that's just the reality of it, okay? Um, remember, and the bottom line is this, that, you know, detox cleansing, it's not a product, it's not a pill, it's not a program, it's not a short-term anything, but it's a commitment to consistent health-promoting lifestyle habits. So by nourishing our bodies, staying active, and addressing stress, addressing sleep, getting adequate rest that we need, we will provide the foundation for optimal health and part of optimal health will be optimal detoxification as well, which will lead us to ultimately well-being. So this sustainable approach, okay, is not only uh, that it supports our body's natural detox processes, but also will contribute again to a better health outcomes in the long run, because I believe that's what everybody wants, or at least they think they want. So the most powerful tools for supporting your body's uh, detoxification processes, you know, is already within you. You know, you have it inside you, it's built in and, you know, God made it for you. If you don't believe in God, it'll be Mother Nature, whatever you want to, you know, believe, but ultimately you are created with a natural detoxification system and processes. So focus on the fundamental aspects of health and you'll be amazed what happens and how incredible uh, your body's ability will be to detoxify itself without any help from you. Um, so I hope the message was uh, received well by you guys. I really hope that I made a point here. I know I'm not the most eloquent speaker. I have an accent as well. Uh, so I really hope this will help somebody to get their act together and to understand what detoxification is and support it and, you know, inspire you and uh, you know get you on your way to you know live an optimal healthy lifestyle to the best of your genetic abilities and your situation well guys this is it for today i went overboard and i tried to do it under 40 minutes it's almost 50 <laughs> uh, so i apologize for that but until next time i'm dr pnd visit us and drpnd.com reach out to us if you have any questions we'd like to you know, help you any way that we can um and we'd love to hear from you so we have a few for you guys any way that we can be. Uh, God bless you. I hope you guys have a uh, phenomenal week. See you next time.